everyone. Hey, my live viewers, replay viewers, and hi, my web viewers. I currently can't see you. I'm on the other side of my iPad, doing this on the other side of my iPad, so I can't see any comments right now. But I'm going to flip around because we're, going, we're coming to you live from the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, and we're coming to you live from inside my house. <gasps> It is a very special episode because of pure fact I was going to do something outdoors, but unfortunately, you got to love the weather, and I'm not about to risk my iPad getting wet outdoors, just so... No, sorry, guys. <laughs> so I'm going to flip around, and we're going to get started, okay? And I'll say hi. So always... So... Oop. So hello, everyone. Hey, hey, hey. So... Oop. <laughs> I got to love live TV. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love live TV. Alrighty, so what's happening today, guys, on Everything Pets is I'm coming at you. My name is Vanessa. I'm coming to you live from the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, hence the accent. <laughs> so, hey, guys, so wait, share it out, please. I would love for you to share it out. Swipe up for Android and across for iPhone. This works best for when you guys share it out. Double tap on the screen. That's all right. Uh, double tap on the screen if you are enjoying this. Hey, Dimitri. And always say your name and location in the comments below so I can give you a shout out. So today we're doing indoor fun with Gary Gaz. Now, Gary Gaz, who is he? He is there. Okay. He's playing dead right now. That's so beautiful. <laughs> so that's Gary Gaz over there. That's Gary Gaz. Gary Gaz is uh, the name I use for my dog and the hashtag I use for my dog. So yes, Gary's a Tibbalier, a Tibetan Spaniel mixed with King Charles Cavalier. Hey, Metalhead, say your name and location in the comments. So um, he's very, very pumped about being involved in this situation, isn't he? Yeah, you can see, yeah. Yeah, my star of the show is piped out. <laughs> so good morning, everyone, from the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. Hey, Matt. Hey, Matt. Welcome, Matt. So if you have any questions in regards to um, indoor fun, for you have five calves. Oh, well, he's half calf. He's Tibetan Spaniel with King Charles Cavalier. So he's got half of that in him. And that's the reason why some of the stuff I do today, you'll probably relate to me with the five calves, that he's very food motivated hugely food motivated so it's going to probably possibly work out so say so your name location and who are your pets i'll give them a shout out of course whilst we're doing this i won't be able to be too interactive of course in this whilst i set everything up but if you have any questions please pop them below and if i don't get back to you now during live during the episode i always try and follow up with you on twitter or in some way ah Teresa in texas so it, the reason why we're indoors if you didn't catch uh at the beginning is because it's nice and raining uh, here on the Gold Coast so outdoors may look great but it's actually really really raining and so I, I'm doing it indoors so we're doing indoor fun with Gary Gaz this is going to be good for him because he hasn't actually gone for his walk yet so he's a bit bored and he's he probably will be super motivated to do this holla holla all right so what I'm going to do is get rid of my mic because I'm going to go over and get Gary and get set up. So the first thing, there's three things I'm gonna try and cover in this scope. I'm really hoping I try. Always say your name and location so I can say hi. Uh, is one, an obstacle course. Two, what's called uh, nose work for dogs. Nose work or hide and seek, it, it depends. No, this is this is uh, regards to pets. My show is everything pets, so. So, Sien, oh, Sabina, Sina, Rusty and Cricket, Bella. Ah, oh, cool names. I love them. Rusty and Cricket. Love the names. So what's going to happen is, um, yes, I'll set up. Hi, Monterey. Uh, oh, Vanessa. My name's Vanessa. Sorry, I introduced myself at the beginning. <laughs> so my name's Vanessa. I'm Pet Love Biz, usually. Surthy. Yeah, no, I love the name Cricket. Hey, Steve, is that Main Beach Gold Coast or Main Beach in uh, like somewhere else? Because GC to me is Gold Coast. <laughs> and I'm, I'm on the Gold Coast. I'm coming to you live from Australia on the Gold Coast here. So anyway, we're going to get set up and uh, show you a couple of activities you can do with your dog if it is a rainy, rainy day. Oh, another local. Hey, hey, I'm here. I'm here on the Gold Coast too. So he can definitely attest. It's raining. It's really bad weather right now. It's not great. <laughs> 
But regardless, let's set it up. We can set up an obstacle course, we can set up nose work, or we can do something else. Like, which one would you like me to do first? So do tell me in the comments below, guys, obstacle course or nose work? Which one would you like me to do first? You type in the comments below. Obstacle? Uh, I'm going to, that's up to you. Do you want me to set up an obstacle course or do nose work? Okay, we'll do an obstacle course. Everyone's, we've got a couple of obstacles. Oh, we've got two, no, hang on, I'll let anyone else out there would like to comment because we've got a nose, oh, now it's tied. Now it's tied, now you're making it difficult. <laughs> anyone else would like to vote? Anyone else like to vote? Oh, we've got nose, all right. Looks like the nose has won for now, don't worry. We'll follow up with the obstacle sort of thing. So we're gonna do nose work and how can we do it? And look, you don't need much to do it. Now, now Gary here is, like I said, very food orientated. Because yes, he's got the King Charles Cavalier in him. Anyone that's got calves or been around calves will know how food orientated they very much are they'll do anything for food you know as long as it goes in their belly it's all good <laughs> so I'm going to now get rid of the mic and I'm going to get Gary and if it gets a little echoey please forgive me we are in my house and I do have tiles and it's just going to bounce all right there you go all righty guys so hopefully you can still hear me and we'll get started Alrighty, so first things first, Gary, <laughs> he's moved. <laughs> Mwah. Yes, totally. Uh, yeah, Pet Love Beers, if you want to give me a message, at Pet Love Beers. So as you can see, Gary moved. He should have been on the mat, he naughty dog. <laughs> okay. So yeah, see, so he is a good dog, but we'll set up now. So always, see, as you can see, I've got a little mat out. It's not much of a mat. It's just like a blanket, but it gives him somewhere to start. Always give him somewhere to go back to. That is the key for one of these things. You want to give him uh, a go place, like a starting point sort of thing. Oh, that's, yeah, that's taken training. <laughs> that wasn't overnight. <laughs> All right, so he's first on the mat because that's where he knows to go and he knows he needs, he needs to do down stakes. So and now we set up. And this is how I do nose work. And this got taught to me by a dog trainer. And I'll just hang on, get the... All right, flower pots. Seriously, that's all you need. Flower pots, I go to your local... Yeah, I will do that. I'll do. I'll follow up one with the basics, how you can teach the basics and everything like that, totally. Right, all you need to do is go to your local garden shop and get some flower pots. Seriously, that's all I did. Is I just bought up a couple of big ones and a couple of small ones, sort of thing. And that's all you need. And the good thing about the flower pots is see how they've got the holes in the bottom? See how you can see through them? See, that is the key. That is the key because then he can sniff. Now, I'm going to just use what's called kibble or dry food. I don't use dry food in his regular diet because of pure fact I feed him meat, veggies, and all that good stuff. He's very spoiled. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, so as you can see there, you can see through there, that allows him to sniff. So if I got any meat, I could get the meat and actually attach it to here, and he can still sniff it, hence nose work. Hence, nose work. All right. And the reason why I do big and small is to give different, well, challenges and stuff like that. So I'm not going to use all of them. You don't need to use all of them. This is just a demo to get you guys started. So I'll just use the three small ones for now. And if this is great because I have a big backyard, so I will sometimes use my bigger ones, okay, for my backyard. So yeah, it's totally your own personal preference. There is, there is no rule here. All right, we'll get set up. <laughs> Don't know if you guys saw that, touch the kibble and he's all like, yeah, look, look, Lordy. <laughs> Gotta love live video. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Gotta love live video. All righty. <laughs> yeah, you know, he is well trained to a point. <laughs> all right, set him up, set him up. Wait, stay, stay. Mm. There we go. 
I'm just going to do a basic one, just doing a basic one. So if you find this of value, it's up for Android and across iPhone to share it out. I'll do it over here. Now, I haven't put the phone in. Oh, yeah, it is. I've got an actual, I have purposely not gotten furniture. This I live in an open planned area, so, um, house, so it's okay. God damn it, he's good. <laughs> yeah, we got started too early. Yeah. Go, stack, on the mat, on the mat, sit, stack, lead, lead. So hopefully he'll do this now. I've got to put the kibble. That's what I'm going to use. I'm going to put the kibble in the actual thing. So then we'll do the nose work. All right. Stay. Because what one of the things you can do with nose work to make it a little bit more difficult is I'm going to get him on the lead. I'm not going to let him just go random, well, I'll do that initially, then I'll show you how you can increase the difficulty. Alright. Alright Gary, go! Good boy! That was just a very, very quick demo of a nose work. Ah, yeah. yeah, he's going to find all your drugs. <laughs> if, <laughs> you can actually, you can. There's the way to do it is, well, put them in a, uh, separate them. You're going to have to separate them. That is the best thing uh, you're going to have to do is uh, to do it with separately. Like, do you, is your garage separate from your house? Because if your garage is separate from a house, take your cars out, um, make some room in the garage, and do it one at a time with the dogs in the garage, sort of thing. So yeah, you can do it one at a time, but just do them in like the garage or some separate room, so then the other dogs are separated from that dog, and that's the best way you can do it, like that. So that's pretty much nose work 101. The way to actually increase the difficulty of that is, I'll just do a quick demo of that, Oh, yeah, I know, I know. Lucky I've only got one, so it's all good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to show you a quick way to increase the difficulty of it. Okay. Up, Lee. Good boy. Come on, Lee. Basically, I was teasing him. Uh, about two, he's about three to four now. Gary's about three to four now. So yeah, he's, he's at a good age. He, you, can, you can redo this with any dog of any age. If you have adopted a senior dog and you want to retrain them, oh no, not Gary. Oh, okay, gotcha. Oh, no, some people may not know his actual age. So that's okay, Tash. Not everyone knows Gary's age. So Gary's about three to four. I actually only started training him uh, earlier this year, to be honest. So yeah, you can retrain dogs uh, any any age, any temperament. It as long as they're alive, they're trainable. All right, Gary, come in, come in, Matt, Matt, sit, good boy, down, good boy, leave. Right. <laughs> so now. 
So now what I'm going to do is show you guys how to set up a quick, uh, how to quick obstacle course now. Quick, this is uh, the second way to do indoor activities with your dogs and you can use whatever. It's like I'm not having got a lot of objects to use but you can still use them for an obstacle course inside. This is all about rainy day activities for your dogs because it's a rainy day for me and Gary needs some exercise and met, as anyone who's had any dogs or knows anything about dogs knows, mental stimulation for dogs it can be tiring for them and it's just as much uh, great stuff as just actual physical exercise. So, all right, so now we're gonna set up uh, <laughs> Well, yes, it's okay. I just, I'm just doing some activities if you've got space. You can still do the nose work without having the big space because the pure fact, uh, well, you can do it around your house using your furniture and everything. I'm using the pot plant things just, just as a way to demonstrate. You don't necessarily have to use them. So it's a case of uh, you improvise. Pretty much adapt and improvise to your situation is the best way for me to explain it. All right, guys, back on the mat. He left. <laughs> the well trained dog, he ain't. Good boy. Stay. See. Alright. So, we'll do a basic obstacle course, okay? Basic obstacle course. You, little bugger. We're putting this away. There is Matt. Sit. Good boy. Stay. So. One. Cushion. Yes. Cushion. Chair. Now, with this chair, you can see how he can go under it and how it's got four legs, right? That's a good way to get a use a chair in an obstacle course because then he can kind of loop through, go under it and go around certain ways of the chair. So it gives you different options. And then last but not least, he loves his bean bag. You can use bean bags as part of the obstacle course. Good boy. Right. <laughs> He's wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> All right, we'll get you back on the mat, guys. Get you back on the mat. <laughs> All right. motivated he's not leaving me go on this he's so not letting me go all right so basically to do this to do this obstacle course I'll just quickly go over it you can create it as you go what I'm going to do is again to go under that going around the beanbag and actually put some paws on the cushion that's pretty much the obstacle course I'm going to get him to do kind of like start at the uh hi buddy she's hoping for food uh, you could do this anytime. You could do the opposite course anytime. I don't do it actually that often because of pure fact usually I use outdoor obstacle courses. But like I said, these are rainy day activities, days when you're like it's really raining heavy and you still need to exercise your dog. Well, guess what? Mental exercise is just as good. And I've got to admit, I'm going to just quickly mention to you guys, I have done this with dogs that have had anxieties. Dogs that have got any sort of anxieties doing this sort of um, indoor obstacle course is great because it gets them moving, gets them out of their head, gets them working. And that's the big thing, gets them out of their head and, of course, gets them tired because you're actually moving around the obstacle course while they're using their mental energy. They're also, of course, using their physical energy. So, yes, so you're getting a double whammy with this. You, once again, you don't need a lot of space. I'm not using a lot of space right now. Uh, it's a case of I've got a couch over there if I wanted to. That's all right. <laughs> That's totally okay. I'll see you. You can catch the replay. I'm going to go for at least another five to ten minutes and just to quickly show this obstacle course, and then I'm going to scope out sort of thing. But I'm going to hang around for a little bit longer so other people can see what the deal is. All right, so like I said, the deal is double tap if you're enjoying this, double tap on the screen, you know, give Gary some love. <laughs> Don't give me some love, give Gary love. <laughs> and I'm gonna basically take him, start on the mat, start on the mat, take him through the chair, go around the bean bag, and there's a cushion down here, and I'll get him to finish on the cushion. 
And that's pretty much, it's a very basic obstacle course, but it gets him working, gets him started. You can use whatever you want around. It's seriously, just use your house. I, I've got, a, like I was saying, I've got a couch. I could make him go up there, come off, and then all this sort of stuff. Gary, you're not begging. Okay, he's doing a beg. Oh, he's been cute. All right, we'll get started. <laughs> That's a very basic obstacle because he's so deep. So. <laughs> I've got the food, hence he's not staying. Hang on. Hang on. He's got half, half cavalier, King Charles cavalier in him, and they're sneaky buggers for food. So, yes. So, the, as you saw, he's not the world's most best trained dog here, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, you can do it with any dog, any dog, um, any size. I've done this with Great Danes. I have done this with Great Danes, where I've done a basic setup, gone through there, around there, over that, whatever, sort of thing. But you could do it with any dog, small or large, sort of thing. So, this is just good activities for a rainy day. And the third activity, which I'll briefly mention, is, of course, tug. Yes. <laughs> I had granted the Great Dane when Lewis was living in a mansion, and so they you thought I had space. They had big space. So, yeah, it was a mansion with lots of space, so it was really, really easy for me to do. Plus, they had different, the way it was set up was perfect. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. But uh, yeah, the third thing I was going to mention just before I finish was if you want a rainy day activity with your dog, tug is actually a good activity to do. You know, something like this, that's good for Gary. Larger dogs, no, you want a larger tug. But tug can be an actually really good game for dogs, can tire them out. I'll see if he actually will do it for me or not. Gary! Forget that. <laughs> but usually, sometimes, sometimes he does do tug. I have to. He's a little bit, uh, well, a little bit distracted right now because he's wanting the food. So Gary, 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 come on! Oh, Gary, Gary, we got it, we got it! Now, the good thing about Gary and Tug is this, right? This is the only thing about Tug. Only do it with the dog that has a good leave command. Seriously, do not do this with dogs that do not let you have a good leave command. Because there you go. You know, you right, heard me say leave. So, all right, get, get. So as you can see, 
see he has a good leave command, okay? Yeah, that he has a very good leave. Gary, okay, I will, okay? Don't back chat. He's having a back chat to me now. Oh, God. No, on your mat, plays with bones and everything. So I don't know what's the difference between him and kids. But anyway... <laughs> <laughs> so hey everyone, that's Gary, my dog. That's been the star of the show. Give him lots of love. Give him lots of love, everyone who's still with us. I know, he wants all the food. He wants all the food. Give him lots of love, everyone. Double tap on that screen to say thank you to Gary for being very cooperative today. And yes, he's done this now. He's, you know, kind of... <laughs> he's kind of been, he's actually been pretty good. He, he usually can be a very cheeky little bugger. I love him to death, but he can be a little cheeky little bugger. But hopefully you guys got some inspiration about days, things you can do on a rainy day when you don't want to go outside and you've got a little bit of room. You don't have to have a lot of room. And the obstacle course you can do with whatever's around the house. Here's your saw. I just used a cushion, a bean bag and a chair. Simple. We could keep doing that a couple of times and Thank you. Yeah, ah, if you watch the Perry Giving, if you watch the Perry Giving, it's a big day out shirt. It's actual, it's like a band, band shirt. I love this shirt. <laughs> it's a very happy shirt. It's a very happy shirt. So if you enjoyed this, give the, give me a follow at Pet Love Biz here on um, Parachute TV. And yes, it's an Aussie. I'm coming to you live from Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. And I'm just shared with you, if you're those who have just joined in, I've just shared with you three rainy day activities you can do with your dog. If it's pissing down rain, you don't want to go outside. You don't need a lot of space for these activities and you can do them in your home. Now, those who have got stairs, you've got a bonus activity. Those who have stairs, I don't. I have, I'm on a one level house, so I don't get to do this activity. But those who have stairs, you have the bonus of a really good rainy day activity. Dog at the top of the stairs, just drop the ball down the bottom, he goes down, gets the ball, comes back up the stairs. Runs down the stairs, comes up the stairs. Run down the stairs, comes up the stairs. Do not discount that. Do not discount using your stairs, even if it's only short stairs. Gary doesn't fetch either, but what you can do if there's two of you, if there's only one of you, may not work as well. But if there's two of you and there's stairs, even if they don't have to be long stairs, they don't have to be long, so it's just some, some sort of incline or um, for you to use. So you, what you do is, yeah, you just use treats. Is One person is at the top of the stairs and the other person is at the bottom. Yeah, and one horse is at the top and the other person is at the bottom. And you kind of do piggy in the middle between you two. If they don't fetch, but you guys have treats, one at the top of the stairs, one at the bottom, and you go, come. Then he goes to there, then you go, come. And this person, he goes down to that person, he goes, come back up to that person and then down this person. See, he's going up and down, up and down, up and down. You don't necessarily have to have a, and, and what you're doing is the bonus of teaching the dog to come. And I cannot reiterate how much a good recall command for your dog is. Well, that's kind of expensive. Then you can, you can actually buy doggy treadmills. That's not a joke. Oh, uh, your dog has only two legs. But uh, is is your dog um, on a wheels on wheels or is it your dog oh, just uh, they're paralysed in the back legs so it's just drag them around? It's like it depends. Like if if they're on wheels, totally I can see why stairs definitely not a good thing. But if they're dragging, believe me, he's he should be okay. If they're not too big, you don't need too long a stairs. Oh yeah, and lots of dogs are like that. Lots of dogs are paralysed in the back legs or have bad hips and everything. So some of these activities will need to adjust, like may not even be suitable to you. So that is the stair activity. Definitely good for dogs that are in a good health and good shape and everything like that. For dogs that are paralyzed, got three legs, uh, you know, got special needs, try and put two things on the one level. Like the obstacle course I just did, great. The nose work I did earlier, great. Because the pure fact it's involving his nose, not his legs. The obstacle course still gets them moving around. Because believe me, dogs don't care if they've only got one leg. They'll still keep going. They'll keep going and going and going, you know. <laughs> if they, because they're here, they're trying to have fun and they're trying to please us, of course, you know. But at the same time, they don't recognise disability like we do. They just, they're just like, oh, my legs drag, you know. But regardless, there are definitely activities you can still do on a rainy day inside with your dog. The nose work one, which I did earlier, uh, the obstacle course one, which I showed earlier with Gary, there's the tug, 
tug. You don't tug is definitely good, but only if a dog has a good leave command. You've got to have a dog that understands. If you say leave, like Gary, I showed on here, Gary does, do it. Tug's fine for dogs that have a great leave command. If the dog, if you have a dog you're doing tug with and you say leave and the dog's still going, arr, 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 you'll need to work on that and you'll need to work on that and it's not really a good activity to do whilst the dog hasn't got a good leave command. You'll have to go back to basics. So anyway guys, my name is Vanessa. I'm gonna scope out very shortly. My name is Vanessa, I'm coming to you live from the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia. Yes, I have, Tash, yes, I have, I have actually. I've popped in and out, I've popped in and out where I can, and I've left your hearts, don't worry. And uh, yes, uh, my name is Vanessa, I'm at Pet Love Biz usually, and I didn't give my sign up here. <laughs> but this Gary has been my marvelous little assistant, and Gary's my three to four year old Tibalier. It's a Betton Spaniel mixed with King Charles Cavalier. And thank you for joining us. And we're next week, hopefully, hopefully my Christmas uh, special. Next week, what we're hoping to do, 2.30 p.m. PST in the USA, 7.30 a.m. for me in the Gold Coast, is we're hoping to do a gathering for dogs and get them all dressed up and we're gonna run a competition and you guys are gonna vote for the best dressed dog. So that's you, you the viewers, will vote for best dressed dog and they'll win a prize. And I'm hoping to get a few dogs out there and the best dressed dog, uh, no, it's coming up. It's coming up next week. So next time, next time uh, you tune in for this next week. So on Friday, 2.30 p.m. PST, every Friday here on Parachute TV One, and then 7.30 in the morning, Queensland time, Australia. I'm here live coming from the Gold Coast, and hopefully next week we're doing a little competition. So you'll have to catch a replay. I really have to scope out, Tash. So, all right, guys, I'm gonna scope out. So swipe up for Android, across for the iPhone, if you wanna share this app. I've only got the one, it's only Gary. I've got, I've got Gary and my cat, Marnie. She appears, she, it's okay, so she makes appearances. Oh, there we go. There's cat, there's Marnie. That's my cat. My cat's decided to make an appearance right at the end. <laughs> there she is there. She's like, nah, -uh, don't forget me. <laughs> so I've got one cat, one cat, the cat there, and Gary's at my feet. So there. So all right, guys, my name is Vanessa. I'm signing out. Thank you so much for all the love hearts. Please share this app if you found it valuable, and I'll see you next week. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>